my name is Bree and I have PCOS and I want to share my PCOS story. I want to share my story mainly because I want to be an advocate for PCOS. I have PCOS. I've had it since I was 13 years old. I'm 23 at the time I'm recording this video so I've had PCOS for 10 years. Um, I want to share my journey and my experiences with other people in the hopes that you can watch this video and you can feel not so alone when you're going through your own PCOS journey. And really my other two main reasons for wanting to share my story are I feel like PCOS re resources should be free. I see a lot of people and a lot of advocates talking about PCOS on the internet, but most of the time they make you pay for those resources or for certain information. I never want to make anybody do that. Um, the worst that you're going to have to do with watching my videos and accessing my resources or watching a couple of 20, 30 second ads before you watch a whole video with information. So that's another big reason is I'm just tired of seeing people all over the internet say that they're going to help you figure out your PCOS, but you have to pay them 30 or $40 per piece of information that you get, you know? Um, and really my other like main reason is I see a lot of women on the internet who have PCOS who are sharing their story um, but I don't see a lot of women who are starting from like the very beginning of their PCOS story so I see a lot of people who start like halfway through I see a lot of people who are like have already lost all the weight that they want to lose I see people who are like sharing their success where they've like gotten pregnant already and just little things like that they don't really share a lot of the nitty gritty and like the hard stuff and the struggles of PCOS and I want to bring a different perspective um, to the PCOS community and share everything from the beginning or not really from the beginning because I've had PCOS for 10 years but um, I want to share from the beginning of me trying to figure out my PCOS so um, that's where I'm at. Don't mind me looking down or seeing the glare from my iPad because I have it here with all of my notes and stuff. So I don't ramble like an idiot and share um, tons of unnecessary information with you guys. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna get started. I wanna talk to you guys about my PCOS story and where that started for me and kind of where I'm at now. I do want to put a disclaimer in this video. I'm not a medical professional and I'm not giving medical advice. So if you are seeking medical advice, you need to get that information from your preferred healthcare provider. I'm not a healthcare provider. Please do not take this information and think that it is the all knowing um, piece of information. Ask your questions to your healthcare provider. At the end of the day they are the ones responsible for helping you not me um just legal disclaimer there i don't want to get sued for anything so um the very beginning um i guess of my menstrual cycle i'm going to share a lot of tmi details here so if you're not into that skip over this video. This probably also is going to be a little bit of a longer video because there's a lot to share in regards to my PCOS story. So, um, my experience with like having a menstrual cycle has been strange from the very beginning. I started my period the summer after I finished third grade. Like I remember I had just finished third grade. My birthday's in June, so like I was just out of school, about to turn 11, I believe. Um, maybe I was about to turn 10. Probably was about to turn 10. I'd have to go back and do the math. But still, I remember it started that summer. Um, I remember in the months prior to starting my period, I had a couple of telltale signs that it was 
coming and that I was approaching like that puberty portion of my life because I was getting hair underneath my armpits that was like long enough for me to shave. It was like dark hair. It was pretty predominant. Um, and I also remember I started to develop breasts around that same time as well. Like I know it started like the beginning of third grade, maybe the summer before third grade. And I do specifically remember that by the end of third grade, right when I was about to start my period, I had like a size B cup breast already. Um, I don't know if that's like normal to me and like my family, that wasn't normal for somebody as young as me to develop that quickly, but it happened. So, um, I remember like, um, my periods were irregular from the very beginning to like, I started very young at a very early age and my periods were always irregular at that time. I don't think that anybody was super concerned about it because I was so young and it was um, a little weird that I had started my menstrual cycles and all of that stuff to begin with at, at that age. So my parents weren't concerned, my doctors weren't concerned at that time. So it just kind of was what it was. Um, I also want to share in this that I never really had any education as far as um, your menstrual cycle or how it works or the purpose of it or um, any education regarding like the whole reproductive system in general. I had nothing, especially not when I was in third grade because realistically how many parents out there are going to sit down their third grader and have like a sex talk with them, you know, like it's just not something that people typically do at that age. Um, I would really say that I never had any like proper education on the reproductive system or your menstrual cycle or anything until I was probably 19 to 21 years old, like somewhere in there is kind of when I figured it all out. Um, so my period was irregular from the time I was, um, in third grade, I was like 10 or 11 to the time, I mean, really throughout my entire life. Um, but nobody ever really thought that it was an issue until I was 14 years old. Um, or no, I was 13 years old, sorry. Um, so when I was 13 years old, I was actually diagnosed with PCOS. It was like the summer that I had turned 13. It was like I was 12, 13 years old um, when I was diagnosed. My mom <clears throat> was a type 1 diabetic. So all throughout my childhood, I had blood work done a lot more consistent, consistently than like a normal kid would. Because my mom was a type one diabetic, I kept getting checked. It was something that um, my parents and like grandparents were afraid that I was going to end up with as well. So I always had my A1C checked. Um, at least three to four times a year throughout my entire childhood. So when I was like 13, I was going to a new primary care physician and I had just my routine like checkup, my yearly physical, I'd done blood work, um, all that good stuff. And I remember when those results came back from that blood work, the doctor's office called and they scheduled an appointment for my mom and I to come in and discuss those blood work results. Um, my doctor told me that my A1C was high, that it was in the pre-diabetic range, and that my hormones were imbalanced. She didn't say what hormone in particular, she literally just said my hormones were imbalanced. Um, she said due to those issues and the fact that I was having an irregular menstrual cycle, she was going to diagnose me with something called PCOS. She told me PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. She told me that it was a hormonal imbalance and that that hormonal imbalance was going to cause a lot of issues throughout my life, um, especially regarding to like my A1C, like she said, it has the potential to make you a diabetic if you don't get your A1C in check. 
she told me that I would probably never be able to have children on my own and that I would struggle with infertility. Um, but really, those are the two main things that she covered with me in that visit. She did prescribe me a 500 milligram metformin to take and said that hopefully by catching it early and by me changing my diet and things like that and taking the metformin that I could prevent myself from being a diabetic until I was much, much older. So, um, other than that, she just told me she wanted to monitor my A1C every three months and that was pretty much the end of that visit. She gave me no other advice, no other education on anything. Um, that just was what it was. So I remember um, pretty vividly that I absolutely hated the metformin. I had stomach issues constantly. I never took the metformin like I was supposed to because of the like constant stomach issues that I was having on it. Um, but I also remember <clears throat> it messed with my blood sugar a lot. So like prior to being on metformin, I don't remember checking my blood sugar, nor do I remember having these specific episodes that I'm about to talk about. Um, so basically I would like take my metformin like I was supposed to every morning. I would like eat breakfast or something and my blood sugar would get up to like 130s, 140s, and it would go from like the 130s, 140s down to like 50s and 60s within a matter of minutes. So like my blood sugar would climb and then it would drop really quick. That is a telltale sign that you have PCOS or what they call insulin resistance. And I'll talk more about the insulin resistance in future videos. But I don't remember having episodes like that before I actually started taking the metformin, which is just a weird concept to me now. Um, so I do remember that I stopped taking the metformin and those episodes did stop being so persistent. Like I may have one every once in a while, but not nearly as consistent as when I was taking the metformin every day like I was supposed to. Um, when I was 14 years old, I tried taking birth control to help with the PCOS and to help regulate my periods mainly because my periods were becoming a lot more irregular than they had been. And so I went from like seeing my period every three to four months to only seeing my period a couple of times a year or every like four months, some, like roughly somewhere in there. Um, so I did take the birth control and it helped me regain regularity with my periods, but it made me feel awful. I wouldn't recommend the hormonal birth control to anyone now that I know a little more about it and just what it does to your body in general. But I remember around the time that I started taking the birth control is the time that I started to have pretty severe anxiety and depression. Um, my anxiety really quickly turned into like full-blown panic attacks. If I had a panic attack episode, it was pretty much awful for me. It was something that like it would happen to me and I couldn't function for the rest of the day. Um, so when I had like a panic attack, my heart rate would get high, my blood pressure would get high. I would feel like I'm going to pass out. I would feel nauseous, like I'm going to throw up. I just felt like really lightheaded. I felt weird in my head. I felt like disconnected from my body. I just felt like every time I had a panic attack, it would get so bad. And then I would just felt like I was having like an out of body experience. It's something that's super hard to explain um, even to this day. But the panic attacks were awful. The depression that I felt was absolutely horrible. There were days where I couldn't get out of bed, where I didn't want to get out of bed. Um, it really led to me being reclusive. I cut off a lot of like family relationships. I cut off a lot of relationships with my friends. I just in general was not the same like happy bubbly person that I was before I started taking the birth control. Um, I remember after I stopped taking the birth control, 
those symptoms got better for me for the most part. The panic attacks I still have to this day, but they come in like waves, I would say. Like sometimes there's a period of my life where I'm under more stress than others. And I notice like during those stressful periods is when I experience the most anxiety and panic attacks but it's not something that's like constant anymore like it was when I took the birth control. Um, so, um, after I had kind of like pinpointed the stomach issues with the metformin and just the anxiety and depression with the birth control, I stopped taking all of those medications and I mean, I felt better off of them. And I wasn't really concerned about my PCOS at that point in my life. I was a teenager. didn't understand the severity of that or how much it was going to affect me later on in life at that point. So I chose to not do anything with it and just leave it alone. Um, ultimately, that led to my periods getting a lot more irregular. I mean, to the point where they were like non-existent. And I just noticed that I had several other issues that started happening. Um, from the time I was like 16 to 17, my periods became completely non-existent. Um, actually from like March of 2017 to November of 2021, I did not have a period at all. That's like four years, a little over four years that I had no period at all, not even once. Um, and honestly, I was just never, honestly, I was just never educated on PCOS and how to be healthy or how your reproductive, um, health worked or how important it was or, I mean, anything like that. It wasn't until October of 2021 that I really started to learn about PCOS and what it was doing to my body and what I needed to do to help it and to try and get it under control. And the reason why I decided to learn about PCOS then was because my mom passed away in October of 2021. She was 41 years old. Um, I don't know if she was ever diagnosed with PCOS, but I'm 99% sure that she had it and I'm 99% sure that my grandmother um, has it or has it also. She's just never been diagnosed with it. Um, so when my mom died though, a lot of things just changed in me personally and internally. Um, and I guess like a big thing that changed is I realized around that time it was like October, November of 2021 when it really hit me that like, hey, like I do want to have kids someday. I do want to have a family of my own. And I just knew that I needed to learn about these things because I remember that my doctor told me I would struggle with infertility and things like that when I wanted to get pregnant eventually. Um, and that just like all stuck with me and that prompted me to learn about PCOS and what I needed to do to fix it. So, um, in November of 2021, I scheduled my first OBGYN appointment so I could discuss it with my OBGYN, ask her like what I needed to do to treat it, um, all of that good stuff. So... I went into the OB's office for my first ever appointment. We went into her office, we sat down, we talked about my medical history, my mom's medical history, my grandma's medical history, um, all of the medical history for the women on my dad's side of the family as well. We discussed all of that. Um, based off of my medical history, she told me she wanted to do a couple of things during that visit. Um, she wanted to do a pap smear, obviously, because you need to go to the OB once a year and get your, your regular pap smear anyways. Um, but she also wanted to do an ultrasound of my ovaries and my uterus, specifically to 
check my uterine lining and see what it looked like and how thick it was considering I did not have a period for a little over four years. So we done a pap smear. She sent me in the room with the ultrasound tech. Um, I remember the ultrasound tech looked at my ovaries and told me that they looked polycystic. She said I had a lot of immature follicles on my ovaries, like everywhere on both the right and the left. And when she started to look at my uterus, she got concerned and I could like just tell by her facial expressions that she was a little concerned. And she brought the doctor in there and the doctor finished the ultrasound of my uterus. After she finished the ultrasound of my uterus and like cleaned off my stomach and all that good stuff, she told me that she wanted to do a uterine biopsy where she goes in and takes some tissue from my uterus and sends it off to be checked for things like infection, precancerous cells, cancer, all that good stuff. Um, Pretty much she just told me that my uterine lining was incredibly thick. They don't like to see it that thick and that I needed to be proactive and do something about it as soon as I possibly could. So I agreed to the biopsy. I signed a waiver. Um, I let them do it. They stuck like a long, um, it's like a stick looking thing up my vagina, through my cervix, into my uterus. And really all I remember from that whole entire experience is that it hurt. Um, I cramped a lot and it was like long, strong cramps. Like it was a cramp that I had and like, it's like my body held that cramp for a good 30, 45 seconds. And it was just awful. Like it was some of the worst stomach cramps that I have had ever in my life. Um, so I got through the biopsy and after that we went back into her office and we talked about PCOS treatment options and this is where I just was super disappointed with my whole OBGYN experience, I guess. Um, so she told me I had two options as far as treating my PCOS goes at that particular point in time. She told me that I could take birth control for it or I could take a medication called Provera for it. Um, her main goal was to get me to have a period because I haven't had one in so long. And um, I told her my experience with birth control and that I just hated the way that it made me feel emotionally. So I chose the Provera instead of the birth control. Um, she also, we talked about like how, we talked about how I wanted to treat my PCOS, but we also talked about like my reproductive health in general. And she asked me if I wanted to have kids and I said, yes, I do want to have kids someday. Um, preferably in the not so distant future. Um, and she pretty much just immediately shut that down which I kind of expected based off of the research that I had done previously about your reproductive health and PCOS and all that good stuff. Um, but really, um, she told me that my like number one goal before I could have kids is I had to lose weight. Um, in November of 2021, I was at my heaviest weight and my heaviest weight ever. And she told me that in order to get testing done to see if I was actually infertile or not, or to even see if I was ovulating or um, to give me like medication to make me ovulate if I was not ovulating, to give me like an IUI or IVF or whatever kind of fertility treatment that I needed, she said that no doctor would help me even run tests to try and figure that out until my BMI was between a 25 and a 30. Um, she said, ideally, I would want you to be at a 25 because I know that you're going to gain weight throughout your pregnancy. So that was 
her immediate piece of advice and I was like, okay, you know, um, what can I do to help myself accomplish that goal within a reasonable amount of time and safely and sustainably and whatnot. And she just told me to work on my diet and exercise, maybe consult with a nutritionist or a personal trainer and it's literally it. Um, so that discussion disappointed me just in general. I mean, I knew, um, I had PCOS and that it was going to be hard to treat and deal with, but I just assumed that I would get a little more help from my OBGYN as far as, um, learning about PCOS number one, but also like treatment options for PCOS. And I just quickly discovered that like, your OBGYN is not really there, or at least mine, maybe not every OBGYN out there, but mine at the time was not there to really help me um, figure it out and learn about it and just get where I like needed to be. So um, pretty much she just told me to come back in a year and that she would do all my normal stuff the next year, like refill the Provera prescription, do another pap smear, all that good stuff. And um, that just kind of was what it was. So I knew in November of 2021 that I needed to work on my health. And I started to throughout that whole next year. Um, but unfortunately, I also had another issue go on that entire year. In like March of 2022, I hurt my back. Um, not really sure how I hurt my back. I was working in a job where I was working from home and I think sitting in the office chair that I was in for a prolonged amount of time messed up my back. Um, I dealt with like a bulging disc and a herniated disc all year long during 2022. In July 2022, um, I found out that I did actually herniate my disc. I had one doctor tell me I needed a nerve block. One doctor told me I just needed surgery. Um, I ended up choosing neither of those options and I wanted to go the most natural healing route that I could. So I found a different doctor who supported that and he let me do physical therapy. I done decompression therapy, chiropractic care to get my back issues under control. And at this point, um, in May of 2023, I hopefully have them under control. I haven't had any issues with my back since January of this year. Um, but I can also tell you that I know my back is not completely healed either. I still have quite a bit of like nerve pain that goes down my leg. Um, I still have like a lot of hip immobility. I have um, a ton of like activities that I can't do. Like I can't sit and drive as long as I want to anymore. I can only go roughly two hours in the car without being in like extra pain. Um, I can't sit down in like an office chair or even sit down on the couch for a prolonged period of time without hurting myself. Um, I can't do certain exercises. There's just a lot of things that will irritate my back and I am babying it a lot because I don't want to um, cause any kind of regression in that healing process. So um, that did hurt me a lot from November of 2021 to November of 2022. That hindered my exercise a lot. Um, but I still did accomplish a lot of big health goals that I had set out for myself during that year. Um, the main thing was I wanted to get off my blood pressure and heart rate medication. Um, I wanted to get my A1C under control and get it out of the pre-diabetic range. And I wanted to lose weight. Um... I did accomplish all three of those things, just not as well as I would have liked to have. Um, I did get off of the blood pressure and heart rate medication that I was taking. So I accomplished that. I'm no longer on anything. I still to this day keep my blood pressure and my heart rate under control just by a couple lifestyle changes and 
supplements and stuff like that. Um, my A1C, again, is also under control to this day. It has only been in the pre-diabetic range one time from November of 2021 to May of 2023, so I am really proud of that. Um, and I have lost some weight, not as much as I would have hoped to have lost between um, a little over a year. It's been like a year and a half now, so... I would have lost I would have liked to have lost more weight um, but I've only lost about 25 pounds from November of 2021 to May of 2023 so that kind of just is what it is at this point and really um, that brings me to the end of my PCOS journey story that kind of was everything that I've a little bit of what I've been through and the symptoms that I've had and all of that good stuff. Um, so yeah, I know that like my back is still healing and um, I'm still figuring out the PCOS thing and I'm still learning about it. I'm still trying different things to see what works for me and what doesn't work for me. Um, like I'm just still going through that process and it's still a learning process for me. I'm just also at the point where I want to share that process with others because I feel like this information is helpful for other people to know and it's information that I wish someone would have and could have shared with me when I first started this whole process back in November of 2021. So um, that's pretty much it. That's my PCOS story. And from here on out, I want to share everything that I go through with you in real time so you're able to um, see it as it's like currently happening in my life. And I also want to bring a lot of PCOS resources to you um, in the format of YouTube videos. So stay tuned for all of those good things because I have a lot of stuff planned. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video and hearing my story and I hope it helps to hear someone else's experience and I hope that you know you're not alone if you're going through your own little journey like I am. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in my future videos.